What's going on guys, Nick Hellman here, aka the Crypto Hitman, and let's do just a quick market overview. Obviously, we know the Bitcoin spot ETF has been approved. On the fake news, we ran to a little over 48,000. On the actual news, we ran to, what is it up here, 49,000. I was saying uh, uh, if the Bitcoin spot ETF, in fact, was approved, I was on the side that it potentially could get delayed for several reasons, and then the hack just kind of said, well... Maybe they'll delay it again. But if not, we'll see a straight-up green candle to 50000 and then we'll see a consolidation and sell-off in price. Well, we got a green candle to 49000 When I said green candle to 50000 everybody said I was bearish, um, and it didn't even get there. We are seeing price action near 44000 A lot of the selling is coming from the conversion of Grayscale's GBTC product into a Bitcoin ETF is allowing people to you know withdraw that Bitcoin and that Bitcoin is getting withdrawn moved to other ETF sold in OTC deals and sold on the open market and that's why we're seeing some downward pressure although the volumes are really high for the Bitcoin ETFs it's not converting to any Bitcoin sell or Bitcoin buys because well Grayscale already had billions of dollars with the Bitcoin uh, BlackRock seeded like 10 or 20 million worth of Bitcoin Vanguard seeded 70 million worth of Bitcoin so all these have Bitcoin until more Bitcoin is needed for these Bitcoin spot ETFs, you're not going to see that buy pressure. And that's why we're seeing this consolidation. I do think we have several levels to keep an eye on. And if we get below this 43.3, I think a lot of the late comers who are buying Bitcoin just for the God candle for the Bitcoin spot ETF will get shaken out, will get discouraged, and it will probably sell. That will lead us to our major support here at this cross line around 40,000. This is an uptrend line, this skinny one that we need to hold. And then this is the kind of 40,000 support that we've seen here on several wicks and the mental support for the nice even number for people. Now, positive thing is we have the 200 moving average here. And we have a 300 moving average here, which can help hold and support Bitcoin as well. We are coming into the 200 moving average if we drop another 100 or $200. Other things to keep an eye on. This is an uptrend line from all the way back here. Well, I think it's still valid because when you can see when we broke above it, we had a straight up green bar and we haven't revisited that level. That's currently somewhere around 36 to 37,000. And then the Hail Mary green buy, if it came, is somewhere around 33.3. That is at the previous support back here after the first fake Bitcoin ETF news that sent us higher into these levels. So we're keeping an eye on things. We're still not giving a trading uh, idea on Bitcoin just yet. This weakness is, it was kind of expected. We're trying to have some patience. First levels, of course, are 40,000. But really, we're looking at if we can get a 36 to 38,000, that's going to be on the back of these late chasers of the Bitcoin spot ETF, getting scared, panic selling. This is going to trigger some stop levels. And then we get to 36 to 38,000. Our buy indicators will get over, over uh, sold on both the RSI and the technometer, and then we should have a bullish diversion setup, which is a nice, easy setup on a nice pullback to get long for another Bitcoin trade. Now, do we get to those levels? We'll see, but we're watching all of these critical levels as we go and waiting for some kind of buy signal. Uh, you have to have a purpose. You have to have a plan. Uh, we can't just arbitrarily go long for trading bags. Now, if it's a hodl bag, you got to pull back here. You want to buy and hold because in the long term, Bitcoin spot ETF is going to be supremely bullish for Bitcoin. But again, these are trading bags. We're trying to find good entries so we can do some short-term and mid-term trading. Another uh, bearish indicator here that we talked about in our patreon.com slash learn crypto is we did have a bearish divergence across the board here. Price is going higher. RSI high is going lower. Big volume on the sell-off. 200 moving average down here. Now, if this 200 moving average starts crossing through this 300 moving average, that's another bearish signal. And that's when we start going to these lower levels. So that's what we're kind of looking on. If you go all the way back to, there is an uptrend line that goes something like this. It was rejected. I have it on a different chart over here. That's where it is. It briefly made it through. Got people to speculate. FOMO, Bitcoin spot ETF is approved. Plus we took out this overhead resistance and right back down. And look on this. The support again is the skinny line somewhere around $41,000, $42,000. That is a Bitcoin. Now let's start going through some altcoins, trades we're doing, what's interesting us, what we're doing. Let's see here. Arbitrum has shown impressive strength. We did get wicked out of Arbitrum for profits here at 165, 166. This was on the massive liquidation sell-off. I don't hate it because it was a spot position, took profits, had chances to buy back cheaper, didn't pull the trigger on the weakness of Bitcoin we were looking for. 
But Arbitrum and some of these layer ones and layer twos are doing really well, following in the footsteps of Ethereum, which we'll talk about shortly. Overall, Arbitrum has been a strong asset. If we can get a proper setup, Arbitrum is one that you're going to want for this next cycle, at least in in the short term future, just based off of uh, Wyckoff wanting to buy strong assets. So profit trade got left behind a little bit, but again, I think it was a 13 or 14 percent trader off of some arbitrage we did with an asset over on Arbitrum Network. Adam has been continuing to stair step higher for us. We did that. Our last sell was all the way up here at, I don't know, 1340. We rode this downtrend line, not fumbling in until it broke out. It broke out. We gave a trade set up here of just over $7. We're now at $10.41. It's continuing to grind higher. It's back above the 300 moving average. Now, if Bitcoin drops, all these are going to get hit, guys. But we do have Adam staked earning, I think it's somewhere between 5 to 15% APR currently in the Kepler wallet. And we are compounding that Adam. Now, if you're in just for this trading position, you're doing still quite well, up about 48% on it. No glaring signs. Sitting neutral, really. We're just going to see if it follows Bitcoin's trajectory. I think Cosmos is a ecosystem that has a lot of upside potential. We're getting a lot of airdrops for being stakers of Atom and really hasn't followed in an explosive manner uh, some of these other scaling solutions like Solana, OP, Arbitrum that we trade and follow. Band. Band we sold here at literally near the high, $2.31.5 for 13.68% profits. It's had a massive sell-off. We're looking at, let's see what the percentage is. Even at current price, it's down 24% since our trade sell. We saw that massive liquidation wick, caught itself, and now has meandered all the way back down. This was a, a critical uptrend line. It broke down be be below it. Look at it drop below the 200 moving average below the uptrend line below the 300 moving average i did make a post in discord that we had a bullish divergence down here i did say no official trade off that due to the weakness in bitcoin but that bullish divergence is up about 14 percent. so if you took a trade off the bullish divergence in our patreon.com slash learn crypto congratulations to you but this is why i am confirming that this uptrend line was vitally important you see the rally rejected at this uptrend line i do not modify these lines i drew the line based off of this right here and look how it's acting now it'll be important to hold above the 300 moving average and maybe we'll get another bullish divergence to try to buy um, the dip here after a sell usually on these we'll buy back the same number of tokens bag the profits for other opportunities real life expenses go buy dinner whatever it may be or add to your bitcoin hodl position still no action here sitting at neutral already had the bullish divergence but it is sitting below the 200 moving average got rejected there in this uptrend line Again, probably will follow Bitcoin lower if Bitcoin decides to go lower. But an asset that we're watching, an asset that we like in the Oracle sector that did have a hot streak there for a while. Now it's nowhere near the likes of Chainlink. Uh, but again, room for growth, has support from Horizon, getting a bigger client list, and was showing some explosive exponential curve move here uh, before the sell-off that we uh, predicted and picked up here at the highs. BNB, man, look at this. In the last video I did, we were running here and I said, if we get to this zone, maybe we need to take a sell. Uh, we didn't actually give an official sell up here. We're just kind of riding it out. But uh, everybody was fearing and footing BNB due to CZ. And look at the rally it's had, even in the face of Bitcoin. This is one that I do want to buy a bigger position of because we're going to pair this with, with our cake, which we're going to talk about here in a second, in an LP on PancakeSwap. PancakeSwap is still one of the largest DEXs over on the BSC network and is offering pretty favorable APR to BNB paired with cake and the LP something like 40% APR and those are two assets that I like two assets that, that I own and think have some upside uh, objectives in the uh, next bull cycle so I don't think we'll have too much impermanent loss and we'll collect that APR on the back side of it as well BNB is here to stay Binance is still huge Binance USA is going to get more uh, regulate regulation guidelines BSC BEP20 is still a thing they just launched OP uh, BSC the opt uh, the um, OP version of that network uh, so they're not going anywhere just because CZ is more in the background. Things are still trending in the right direction. They're doing buybacks and burns of the token. It's still the utility token of one of the largest exchanges in the crypto ecosystem. Now we just got to find a setup. Should have bought it here on the dip at January 8th. That would have been a nice setup and just paired it in the LP with Cake, uh, but just didn't get that done. Let's talk about Cake real quick as well. 
This is what we've been seeing up on Cake. Coming back from the dead as they are now deflationary. They're adding LP. They're adding uh, more pools again. And again, they're burning more and more tokens as they're still one of the top DEXs over on the BSC network. This is the critical uptrend line here that it, it remains to hold. We see it is starting to correlate with the 200 moving average and the 300 moving average. So I don't see any reason to be a buyer or a seller here. We're sitting at neutral. Um, it would be nice if Bitcoin drops that this can hold i doubt it will i'm sure we'll see a wick down back into the zone towards two dollars and 25 cents but nonetheless an asset that has was absolutely smashed in the bear market due to its inflationary uh distribution they are addressing that they've reduced the total supply they're still uh survived the bear market in one of the top decks here so i think in this next bull market you're going to see more idos over there see more trading volume over there which is going to lead to a trajectory of higher for cake Now let's get to Coinbase. Oh man, Coinbase topped out up here around 187.61. I drew uh, these boxes. These are some gaps that we see on Coinbase. People thought I was crazy for even thinking that. Now these are still a long way away, you know, $100 or $80, but we've seen a big drawdown off of uh, Coinbase. Getting into oversold area here, so maybe I need to look for a buy because we also do see the 50% the FIB level here at 129.13. Wyckoff likes to buy pullbacks at the 0.5 level. Uh, also likes to buy strong assets in individual sectors. So we like the crypto sector, the Bitcoin sector. That's what Coinbase is in. It's one of the strong assets. And now we are approaching this 50% FIB level. This could potentially have been an A, B, and we're working on a C down, which should lead us, at least even in a bearish case, a rally back to this 160 level whenever we find a low down here. So this is when I got my eyes on patreon.com slash learn crypto. We'll get the buy. Twitter will get the buy at some point uh, if we get a nice setup. Again, we're getting close, but I do think we still have downside risk here to 115. And if Bitcoin really wants to sell off, I'm not saying it's a for sure, but it just hypothetically, Bitcoin goes to 36 to 38,000. I think there is a possibility of filling this gap around $100, uh, which would be just below this 200 moving average, but hold above the 300 moving average most likely. Uh, so this is one we've traded with great success, selling, buying back cheaper, selling, buying back cheaper, selling, buying back cheaper, selling. We got left behind here on this last sell due to a stop. Uh, but uh, we just didn't feel comfortable with what Bitcoin was doing. And Bitcoin really hasn't moved much for this uptrend here. And now we're seeing, uh, you know, Coinbase really back and fill as the Bitcoin spot ETF approval has happened down 29%. I still think Coinbase is going to be a big winner in the bull market. So we want to find a re-entry, but it has to make sense. I think the first objective here is somewhere around this 0.5 FIB level. Let's see what else we got here. Do, 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 do. Uh, Floki, here we go. Floki having a nice rally off the lows. If you missed, we've been in Floki forever, guys. We are staking Floki now, but look at all these beautiful trades selling tops. And now our most recent entry, we're up about 3% on our most recent buy. We bought back here, and we are staking the asset here to earn token. Uh, but if that's the buy that you missed, we're up about 3%. If we get a little bit of a pullback here, Floki is the, my, our preferred dog meme coin. More than a meme now with Valhalla. Staking opportunities to earn an RWA asset in token. Um, still has the dog meme coin. So if Doge runs, it will follow. Has Flokify Locker product, which we know that they made a partnership with Dead Prez USA recently. In which projects decide to lock up their liquidity. Uh, paying a small fee to Floki, which then gets burnt out of circulation forever. So they're doing massive burns. They've burned like something like 55% of their tokens. They also have a massive 40 to 50% of their circulating supply locked into staking protocols. So I think Floki is a strong asset leading into the next bull market. Still has the meme sector, still has a product sector, has the metaverse sector, really touching all bases. And as staking is earning token, which is an RWA asset, so no more inflation for Floki there as well. Right around our recent buy. Again, we didn't sell these rips or anything because this is more of a hodl bag when we're staking it for about 40% APR. And it would take a big upside for us to want to unstake and take a trade on Floki. We do love it. We do like it. You know, I, I have the Floki chain. Uh, so Floki is going to continue to be a staple of our portfolio for the next foreseeable future. Juno, this is part of the Cosmos ecosystem making a massive comeback off the lows. Love to see it. I think it has much higher to go, much higher objectives uh, on Juno over the long term. We're simply hodling Juno. We have it staking for 15% APR paid out in more Juno, and we're compounding that. Juno is also receiving some airdrops. We got the noise airdrop simply for staking our Juno, and I think there's going to be a trend there where a lot of these Cosmos ecosystem plays are receiving airdrops, whether that's Juno, Osmo, Atom, uh, Tia, and the list goes on. 
Juno is when we're in, when we're staking, we're compounding that APR, and we're hoping this trajectory continues to the upside. Remember, this was one that people loved uh, last cycle. It topped out at like $45. Now, I don't I don't have a target of $45 for Juno again just due to how much more supply is in circulation, but a $5 Juno, a $10 Juno makes complete sense to me. Let's earn that APR along the way. Let's get our airdrops along the way, and let's start utilizing the Juno ecosystem. Let's see what else. Mara. Mara, we gave a sell at $24.80, maybe $25. I think it was more around $24.80 here. Took a lot of flack when it continued to run for another day to $30. Everybody said, there's no reason to sell. Why are you selling this? Leading into tax seizing, leading into the Bitcoin ETF. Nick, you're an idiot. Why would you take profits on Mara now? And cocoon, and cocoon. Now Mara all the way back below $20. On my recent uh, post in Patreon, I said we have interest points around 20 and at this point, 5 fib at 19.28 with downside risk all the way to 15 bucks. We still are not oversold on the RSI. We're still also not oversold on the technometer or Wyckoff indicator, but we have seen a nice pullback here. This could have been an ABC completing. We have to look at the charts because we are in this range of interest and we are down now 22% from our profit sell. This is how we compound winners. We get profit sales, so you're making money. We look to buy back cheaper. We can get back the same amount of shares and bag the profits for another opportunity or increase our share position for the next run up in an asset that we think is in a proper sector for the next market cycle. Mara is a Bitcoin miner, uh, one that we have some interest in and we are looking to buy for another trade at some point. If you want that trade in real time, patreon.com slash learn crypto. Also keep it monitoring our, our social media. At some point we will post, post that for public consumption as well, but we don't know where the, pr the price will be at that point if it's a quick reaction you guys may be late to the party but again i told you this is an area of interest we're keeping an eye on it but i'm just not getting the signals just yet um and no real news no real news of interest earnings is up here close to the bitcoin having so that should be interesting as well we know the earnings still might be better uh leading into the bitcoin having because the higher inflation rate of bitcoin they should be earning more bitcoin the earnings after the bitcoin having if bitcoin price is not substantially higher i think uh could be risky for a lot of these miners as that inflation rate has been half so in theory the revenue is cut in half if the bitcoin price stagnates for those people micro strategy another one that we traded like a fool buy sell buy back cheaper sell buy back cheaper sell we didn't miss this run up again uh we just didn't like the action what we were seeing we were just pulling profits into cash after buying back and compounding our shares several times big money there and now we're seeing a big drawdown off the highs on micro strategy this thing went to over 720 dollars and it's already back to 497 when i put this area of interest here between 385 to 400 dollars when we were up at these highs people thought i was crazy you are a fool nick what are you talking about and now let's look at where we're at $499. We're already below the 0.5 fib level. We got the 618, which Wyckoff still likes, that correlates with the previous high at 469, which is still another $40 downside and would start to line up with the 200 moving average and the 300 moving average. But this is a gap, folks. This has a potential of getting filled. Now, we are watching this because MicroStrategy, out of all the Bitcoin and crypto related stocks that we trade and that we're watching, is the most oversold. And we also do have an oversold reading on our proprietary technometer, which is is normally a buy setup if bitcoin holds and starts reversing micro strategy would be the first asset that we look to take a trade on as we did fall into this gap between the 0.5 and the 0.618 this previous uh trading zone here and we have had a huge drawdown now we would look for some if if we're buying around these levels you would look for some consolidation the 200 moving average to move up here to support it the 300 moving average to move up here to support it otherwise you still have downside risk to the previous high and man, if Bitcoin does the 38 to, you know, 36 to 38,000, this is definitely in play. You have a 786, you have a gap, uh, and uh, those gaps like to get filled. It would take some time to get there because you're going to need these indicators to reset. So some sideways, let this reset, we dump again, and we get a bullish divergence near this zone in which we go long and ride this thing to Valhalla leading into the next Bitcoin bull market as Bitcoin trends towards $100,000. Do, do, do. What else we got here? What else we got? Penn stock. This is a GambleFi stock. I mean, look at this downtrend that we waited out. We started talking about Penn that I want an entry all the way up here, and we waited, and we waited, and we waited, and we waited, and we waited. And, we waited. and what do you know? We got an entry. We sold for profits. Double digit project profits, of course, because that's what we do. I don't know. 
20%, 22%, 18%. Use trailing stops to try to get more out of this. We have this uh, formation with the objective down here at 2144. That would also line up with this previous uh, resistance flip support here. We see we break out, we retouched it. That is now support. If I extend this out carefully, look where we're heading. Look where we're heading, folks. Down 7.66% from our sell, from our profit sell. So we do have interest in getting pen again. Again, we're getting close to oversold. We're seeing stocks give it up, but it did give up the, the uh, 300 moving average, the 200 moving average. We see a bearish cross here on the short-term moving averages. We have the bearish formation that we drew. That's why we had to stop here because if it broke below this, we knew it was going to waterfall. And we still have targets down at 21.44. For, so for now, we are still watching, looking for a buyback opportunity. This will be one where we buy back uh, all of our shares plus more, whatever whatever the percentage is, if we buy back cheaper, looking to compound on that. Because I do think Penn with their ESPN bet partnership does have upside potential. Also, gambling and casinos we see in Web3 in the casino world are, are popping off. But in the traditional world, is going up by uh, revenues are increasing by billions of dollars a year, year over year. And I think that is an expanding sector in which Penn is going to continue to find some success. So let's get all the jeets out and we'll hopefully find another entry like this to make some more double digit profits in the casino sector. Riot, this is another Bitcoin miner. Uh, we are seeing a massive sell off. You can see here we had the head and shoulders. Let's see what the objective is on a potential head and shoulders here. From the neckline drop down and what do you know look at that objective not even drawn uh, this is a gap I marked a long time ago this is a gap all the way down here between 1050 and 1062 look what the measured move of this head and shoulders is 1082 1082 you have a bearish cross here <laughs> the 200 moving average crossing to the 300 moving average you got some more positive action out of it and then now we are jumping out below the below these moving averages and what do you know that would be wild if that happens and that would be a buy we're not quite overbought i would like some consolidation let this reset to neutral another dump out into this target range bullish divergence go long into the next bitcoin bull cycle leading us towards 100,000. bitcoin miners will do well for the foreseeable future you have the earnings here mid-march this is before the halving so i'd expect earnings to be pretty decent then we have the same concern we have with mara is the next earnings might be lackluster unless bitcoin price appreciates quite significantly because realize their revenues potentially are cut in half by the halving event it's gonna be much harder to mine those bitcoin blocks sell that bitcoin for profits or whatever it may be so I think if we can get washed out, get an entry, this earnings could be decent leading into this earnings, leading into the Bitcoin having hype. We see another trade exit point up in here for profits once again. What else we got to talk about? Token. Token is, <clears throat> let's see here, an asset that we are earning by staking our Floki. Yes, we absolutely killed it. Yes, we bought token all the way down here. Sold it. Do do bought it sold it do, do, do. bought it here we just couldn't break out of this range we had a slight opportunity didn't meet the objective so our, our, our orders didn't get filled here meander sideways bitcoin sell off now we are having a huge rally here on the back of the news that larry fink's talking about rwa again that's what's rallying here we need to break above this 200 and 300 moving average that we see here to really continue higher um because right now we are getting rejected which is tough so we need to break out above this, get back into this range I have defined here, and then we can move higher and upward into token. We've already made a bunch of money off a of token. We didn't, you know, we, we pocketed the profits on this, bought back same number of tokens, pocketed the profits on this, bought back same number of tokens, and, uh, you know, those profits were redeployed into Floki and other assets like OP, ARB, et cetera, that we were trading. But uh, I still think this is an undervalued RWA play. You can stake token now as well. You can stake Floki to earn token. We really need to get above these levels to get back into this range before the upside can continue here on token. This is one if you don't own any, stake Floki to earn it or buy a position. Um, it's tough to say here because we did get rejected here and Bitcoin is weak. Maybe a back test into this 2028 20, range. I hope that doesn't happen because we already have a position. I would love for this to break out. Again, we have this staking, so we're earning APR on it. We are earning more token with our Floki staking. Um, this is overall just a fundamental play, undervalued RWA asset. Um, once they start launching their products and RWA gets hot again, we're going to see a new run and get above this uh, six cent high towards the eight cent 
objective that I've had for quite a while. All right, that's token. What else we got? Do, do, do. I think the last thing we want to talk about on this list is Zen. Zen, our last trade we took on it here. You can see we were looking for a breakout above this uptrend line, this resistance. Boom, we exploded. We had a target of only 11.53. It did get up to like 13.50. Nonetheless, big winner there. Meandered, struggled around this uptrend line, and these moving average had a bearish cross, fell below this uptrend line. If I extend this out, and what do you know, we dumped here. Now, it was staying pretty in line with what's going on. It uh, looks like I got the little guy behind us. Was well, staying pretty in line with what's going on with Bitcoin, but we did have a FUD sell off here. This is where a lot of the sexes uh, put Zen on the list for privacy, currency, cryptocurrencies, worried about what that means for regulation in the future. People panic sold. What do you know? Zen did a DAO vote. They are removing the last uh, privacy shielding aspects of the Zen token and a big rally off of that news. Uh, we'll see as Zen consolidates. Still overall underperforming the market this cycle so far much higher upside objectives if you look at the token distribution it's very similar to bitcoin so in token distribution market cap wise must higher much higher objectives they are backed by grayscale which now has a bitcoin spot etf approved does an, a zen product come in the future we already have a zen product does a zen etf come i don't know doing a lot of big things with the zen mainnet uh have partnerships with uh apecoin for example, they work with Band Protocol, uh, a lot of big things. So I'm going to try to get Horizon on an interview on my YouTube channel again, and let's see what they have going. Let's see if they can catch up to the market. If they play catch up, you're looking like something around 20 to $22 is what puts them in line with OP and Solana and some of these that, that uh, really recently launched. Hang on, buddy. I'm can making I, a video. Can I, what? Can I put the dog a treat? Yeah, you can give the dogs a treat. Okay. Hey, reality of the situation. Got the kiddo here still making videos. So uh, that's the full recap. This will be broken down into smaller bite-sized bits. Make sure to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Make sure to join us over at patreon.com slash learn crypto. If you want myself, Todd Butterfield, the community, our live trades, when we're buying, when we're selling, what the stop levels are, whatever it may be, your daily updates on cryptocurrencies are happening right here. Don't miss out on this massive opportunity at financial freedom, and we'll continue to keep killing the game. Peace.